What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another breakdown on Marvel's Avengers War Table stream. In my last video, I did an in-depth breakdown analysis on the story aspects that were presented such as the MODOK threat trailer, and we managed to uncover quite a few interesting details regarding the Inhumans and what the Avengers were up to during the 5 year hiatus after A-Day. In today's video, I want to talk about the gameplay and customization features such as the co-op and gear system. But before we do that, I want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor, G2A. If you're looking for a way to purchase the hottest video games without burning a hole in your wallet, you should really consider checking them out. They offer key codes for different platforms such as Steam, PS Network, and Xbox for half the price of the original. Why wouldn't you want to take this deal? I mean, you absolutely lose when you overpay, so go ahead and seize the win. You can do so by clicking the link that will be provided in the description box below. But anyways guys, Crystal Dynamics gave a lot of juicy details in their War Table stream regarding the co-op and gameplay. With that said, there seems to be a split between those who have been convinced to buy the game and those who are still uncertain about getting it. And I think it's because this is a very ambitious project that will be packed to the brim with content. Something I noticed is no matter how much the developers try to explain things, there are still certain questions that haven't been answered. And I honestly think it's because there's so much within this game. I mean, I can't speak for others, but whenever I have a lot of ideas in my mind, it can be a pain trying to explain everything concisely. So I can only imagine how hard it is for Crystal Dynamics to try to get everyone to understand exactly what kind of game they're getting. That's why I'm dedicated to assisting them and bringing you as many details as possible. But anyways, the first thing we're going to get into is the customization. According to PlayStation Blog, playing through the Reassemble campaign and Warzone missions will reward players with an array of items including gear, resources, artifacts, and cosmetics. While maintaining the core DNA of each hero is important, they wanted to ensure each player can tailor the game to their preferred combat and aesthetic style. Some that I noticed that wasn't necessarily elaborated on is how we'll essentially be able to customize the colors of each Avengers suit. Shortly after the real symbol trailer was posted, a Twitter user by the name of Adam Milliken brought something very interesting to my attention. He noticed that the Star Boost Iron Man armor featured different components compared to the one we saw in the overview trailer, particularly in the chest. And initially, I shrugged it off as nothing more than a minor recolor, but he pointed out that the chest piece didn't only feature a different color, but it was also completely different in shape. It looks very similar to his default chest armor, not to mention that the extra boosters on the shoulders that were featured on the first version of the Star Boost suit aren't there. And when I saw this, it instantly made me assume that the level of customization to the suits may be more advanced than I originally thought. Something that I wanted from this game was to feature a gear system that's very similar to that of Injustice 2, where you can mix and match certain gear artifacts to create your own unique suit. And yes, I already know that they said that the gear isn't going to affect the outward appearance, but if this is anything to go by, then it could possibly confirm that we might be getting some sophisticated levels of customization. Now granted, during this instance we saw Iron Man's suit change through quick transitions as he did his awesome superhero landing, and the suit that was shown before was the default armor that the Star Boost armor seems to have swapped chest pieces with. So it could possibly just be an in-game error that was made during the making of the trailer. Regardless of what the case may be, the fact still remains that you'll get to change the colors. During the co-op in Warzone's trailer, I noticed that Iron Man's prototype armor was sporting different colors compared to the grayest default color. Instead, it features the classic gold and red color scheme with gold parts being thighs, upper arms, stomach, face, and shoulder plates with red accents. And obviously, this is referencing the Iron Man Model 4 armor that was first seen in the 1976 comic Iron Man Issue 85. This classic look was also referenced in Avengers Endgame when Tony Stark created the Mark 85. But anyways, after noticing this, it made me think of the endless possibilities players could have when it comes to remaking classic suits from the comics and movies. If I wanted to, I can turn the original Sin Iron Man armor into a Model 50 Endo Sim armor by simply changing the colors. Or I can make Infinity War or Ultimate Thor by changing his upper body armor to black as seen in this particular scene. I've noticed that all the Avengers members feature different changes made to their default suit colors. Like in this one where we see Black Widow sporting her classic gold gauntlets as opposed to the silver ones. This level of flexibility to the customization is going to make the online experience even more fun. Like I can only imagine how cool it's going to be seeing all the creative customizations players are going to make. And while I don't think this game is going to beat Marvel Spider-Man's overall quality, I think it's safe to say that it'll add more to the imagination when creating your own suits. Like I remember being disappointed when I found out that you couldn't fully customize your own Spider-Man suit. You can only swap out their abilities. Like I would have loved to have changed the Raimi suit to black to recreate the symbiote look, but it looks like Marvel's Avengers will offer this. PlayStation Block says and I quote, Player gear doesn't change player look. Look good, play good. So you can rock your favorite ensemble while continuing to increase your power level. Cosmetics can be gained in a variety of ways including unlocked through the campaign, dropped in war zones, bought from faction vendors, or purchased through the in-game marketplace. 
Additional unique cosmetics can also be unlocked through accomplishing challenges on hero chase cards, which have tiered reward paths tied to completing challenges. So this game is obviously going to encourage a lot of replayability. Like there's obviously going to be certain suits you'll unlock as you progress through the story, like the Stark Tech suits, but there are going to be plenty of rare suits you can find when you play online with friends among other things. I think I'm going to spend most of my time playing with the fabrication machine to see how many costumes I can come up with. But moving on, I want to get into the skills and gear segment, because this is going to be where we can go completely crazy with the way we play with each Avengers member. According to PlayStation Blogs, you increase your hero level and unlock new character specific skills as you gain experience. For example, you can choose to equip Iron Man's iconic repulsor, micro rockets, or lasers to take enemies down. Each hero has several categories of unique skills that allow you to fine tune your playstyle. As you would expect, gear are gameplay items equipped across 7 different slots to enhance hero abilities such as damage dealt for ranged or melee, defensive enhancements to protect against aim advanced weaponry, or special combined technologies such as gamma radiation damage or integrating PIM particles into your arsenal. Now if you go back and look at the war table stream, you'll notice that we have about 5 different tiers. You have your common and uncommon gear that boosts things such as your melee combos, and you have your epic gear, your legendary gear, and rare gear. And we saw what the Gamma and Pym Particles did with characters like Iron Man. Like, I'm very eager to see how these particular gears play for other characters. Like, we see Thor has something called the Pym Particle Emitter where the effect can be activated after pinning down an enemy with your hammer. And I'm thinking I'm going to be utilizing the Gamma gear the most since it's going to be a damage dealer. If we have 7 slots, then we could possibly combine different gears together for added effects. PlayStation Blog says that special abilities will come with the gear and artifacts and are tailored to encourage specific playstyles for your hero. For example, certain perks apply gamma or cosmic damage to your attacks. When combined, perks and attributes can help define your playstyle. We've even created branded gear to help identify builds like Stark Tech for ranged ability augmentation and shield gear for defensive play. So I guess that pretty much answers my question. I can actually combine these gears to pull off some crazy tactics. I'm assuming that since they said that they have branded gear that they'll have some preset combinations available which will help us get a good sense of which gear works well with other artifacts and we can eventually go crazy with our own little combinations later. But moving on, I want to go more in depth with the gameplay. I'm noticing some things that have slightly impressed me but I was expecting a bit more. If I were to explain what this game is, I'd say it's Lego Marvel Heroes combined with Ultimate Alliance except with a more realistic vibe. You see all the cool looking moves and the particle effects only adds to the realism. But with that said, I feel like the animations could use a little more work along with the audio. When I was watching the Once an Avenger Thor gameplay, he looked like his combos were lacking something and the animations for the moves were a little clunky. Like this part where Thor gets picked up by one of the aim bots, it seems like it's missing the impact when he gets slammed down. A lot of the moves look like they're missing that, which is strange considering the fact that his A-Day gameplay had that aspect on lock. Something else I'm a little apprehensive about is the defense mechanics. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who noticed that Thor was staggering a lot when he was hit. If we're not going to have some kind of guard or counter system for particular characters besides Captain America, it's going to ruin the combat because I don't want to have my combo streams constantly interrupted like that man. I need to be pulling off cool moves and dealing out as much damage as possible. If this game is supposed to have the same guy who designed the combat for God of War 2018, I can't see why Thor wouldn't have a counter deflect or something of that nature. If he can use the spinning hammer moves as an attack, then he could do it with other things like deflecting energy blasts. He should be doing cool defensive maneuvers like he did at the beginning of the Thor Ragnarok movie. I'm assuming that whoever they had playing this mission wasn't that good because they didn't do a good job selling the viewers on how fun Thor could actually be. And I noticed that they didn't show the cool stuff until the narrator started talking about some of the moves like the manual targeting. I mean it's nice of them to have this cinematic display but we should have saw all these things during the demonstration along with a heads up display. Like I'm not trying to sound harsh because I really want this game to win but it's important that the devs stick their landing when showcasing all of these things. The sound effects for the attacks didn't even sound like Uru Metal hitting robots, but for some reason it sounds better when the narrator is doing his breakdown on the moves. So maybe the sound effects can be adjusted, I don't know. Anyways, other than that, we gotta look at how some of the heroic abilities can give buffs to your teammates. Like this one scene where Iron Man flies by Thor to receive an invulnerability buff after he uses his Warrior's Fury heroic. It kinda reminds me of the scene in the first Avengers film where Thor accidentally charges Iron Man's suit after he shocks it with lightning. Power at 400% capacity. How about that? And hopefully certain buffs will have exclusive attributes for some of the heroes. Kinda like in Ultimate Alliance where you get synergy boosts when you team up the right characters. You know, something that'll make us use our Marvel knowledge. 
Something else I'm hoping to get is team attacks. Like we got the team finishers, but we didn't really see any team attacks like Iron Man and Cap's Repulsion Shield Refraction or a fastball special from the Hulk. We really need stuff like that, man. But anyways, that's all I have for you all today. I have another video regarding a Reddit Q&A done by the developers, so be on the lookout for that. But while we wait, you can let me know what you think about this video. Are you interested in the gear system? And do you think the customization will be extremely flexible like I do? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.